What is up, Handstand Army? We are back. God has infinite potential, infinite leisure to spare for each one of us. So we are kicking it off with a tutorial that I'm very excited about, and that is the bigger one-arm handstand. Some call it figure, some call it goofers. No one really knows, but everyone knows this is the shape that everyone wants when they start learning their one-arm handstand. Now, before we start this tutorial, I have to give a massive shout out to the one and only Miguel Santana. Oh, handstand friends. Oh, do you want to be my friend? Oh, yes, please. This man has single-handedly transformed how I think about figure and the cues and applications that I've used to get it to where it is today. So throughout this video, the cues that you're going to hear are pretty much all from him. I'm sure you're following him on Instagram. And if you are not, definitely go down to the description below and I'll tag his Instagram. Not that he needs me to shout him out. What we should also talk about before we start training the figure one arm is the prerequisites. Now, funnily enough, what you're going to need before you do the figure one arm handstand is a one-handed handstand. Yes, that is right. You are looking from anywhere between 25 and 40, 45, 50 seconds, 55 seconds before you're doing this shape. It's an incredibly hard shape that requires a lot of movement and a lot of different things going on as you're trying to enter this shape. So you have to have some kind of understanding of how to at least balance a one-arm handstand. The other thing you're gonna need, you're gonna need some form of pancake flexibility, okay? Because the amount of times that I've gone to do my figure and my brain's going, hey, my legs feel really straight. And my legs are going, nah, mate, you're not straight at all. You are, yeah, you're actually very, very bent. I watched the video and sure enough, it looks incredibly ugly. So you're gonna need some form of pancake, you're gonna be needing to work on your active flexibility, all that kind of stuff, because in this shape, it's gonna require all of it. So folks, before we start, we're just gonna look at some of the most common mistakes I see when people are learning to figure. So the first one we have here is we have the rotation with the legs. But as you can see, the belly button is still facing towards the camera. So we wanna bring a rotation from the pelvis and also a bit of the spine and get the belly button facing the opposite direction. This is gonna really help you as you bring your legs down into the compression that's required for the figure. Here we can see that as the legs come down, we are pulling our hips towards our free arm and then losing balance. And also here, the same thing, our hips getting pulled the other way. Now these are very common when you first start and they still happen from time to time. Um, but as you really try and focus on the drills I give you on later, hopefully you should see this happen less and less. Now, this is really awkward, but just kind of work with me here. I don't want you to imagine that there's your handstand and you're just bringing your legs down. In fact, what I want you to imagine, if I can get this to work, is as your legs are up here and your hips are over here, you are pulling yourself back with your hips as your legs are compressing down towards your shoulder. You're not simply thinking about just dropping your legs down. You are thinking about this kind of sucking motion of your hips going back and your thighs compressing towards your shoulder. So as you're going into this sucking motion of your hips going back and your legs dropping, you are going to pull your head in the opposite direction of your hips. So your legs are coming down, your hips go this way, and you are pulling your head into the opposite direction as you compress your legs down towards your shoulder. So this is a concept that I really want you to keep in your head as you try your figure. Now there are two main ways to get into the figure one arm handstand that I see most predominantly used. Uh, the first one is going from a straddle one arm handstand, dropping that inside leg and bringing the outside leg across into the figure position. And the one that I see less often is uh, going from a two handed handstand into a fork, going to fingertips and then closing down into the figure position. Now the reason I believe the latter version is used less often is because this requires an incredible amount of flexibility or balance. So some people can drop their legs into the position and then simply bring the arm up into the figure. But me and a whole load of other hand balances are unable to do this. So what I have to do is bring my legs down as far as I can, bring my legs 
down whilst I take my hand off and then thread it through the leg. Now, this can be incredibly challenging because not only are you dropping the legs down whilst threading the shoulder forwards, uh, threading the shoulder up, but you also have to think about moving the hips backwards as you are bringing the legs down. So there's a lot to think of. The first time I ever did a figure was going from the straddle position. I found with my arm off the floor, it allowed me to rely less on flexibility and more just finding the correct shape. If you have your hand on the floor, I think most people find it very hard to bring your legs down into this flat position. Now, some people can do this very well, but me, for instance, uh, struggle greatly with this entrance. Now, the thing that's difficult about this shape, it doesn't just require you to have some form of relative pancake flexibility, but actually it's really hard to activate that flexibility as you're twisting through your, your T-spine at the same time, because you're not just in a normal handstand position and then dropping your legs to the side. There's actually a rotation through the shoulder, also the T-spine as you're compressing your legs down. So there's a lot going on. I found that the next few drills I'm gonna give you are really helpful working through that range of motion. And over time, as you do it, your body does start to understand exactly what's going on. Um, so yeah, let's look at these exercises that I really recommend. So here we have an exercise that um, I don't really know the name of, I just call it fluster figure. So I'm using a ball to really help as a focus point. I'm getting some uh, extension and rotation through my thoracic spine, as well as pushing up through my shoulder as I compress. It's also very important as well to think about extending your legs. It feels a bit, feels a bit nervy, but we're gonna really extend and push through our legs as we pull our shoulder down towards in that compression whilst pushing up. Now this exercise is far from perfect, but it's the best one I've found at working through this range of motion required for the figure. So this next one is for those who think they've got the required flexibility or the balance to do the entrance from full. So you go into fork and then you lower down and you really think about pulling your legs down towards the chair whilst you bring your hips in the opposite direction whilst also compressing and pulling the head and the shoulder back towards the chair in the opposite direction to the hips. So I actually think a lot of people find going from straddle a lot easier, especially with the hand off the floor and pulling the leg down and I'm isolating it and pulling it down towards the, the bench, towards, I don't want it going up towards the ceiling. Um, and I'm also compressing my thigh down towards my shoulder. Really pay attention on keeping the legs pulled down towards the chair. So yeah, then here we just have going from a straddle one arm and just playing with gliding the legs across while focusing on keeping the back leg isolated i'm moving the forward leg towards the free arm so here we have arm releases so i'm just bringing my arm up towards the ceiling and at the same time i'm really focusing on pulling the feet down towards the chair Often when we take the arm up, the, the legs will also go up as well. So I'm really trying to focus on pulling them down towards the chair. Here you can use uh, monkey bars for the same drills, but I actually find it a lot harder because there isn't as much space for your feet uh, when transitioning from the straddle back to the uh, figure. want you to think about is which position your legs are in. Now sometimes when people are learning that back leg is in line with their balancing arm and their front leg is further towards like if I was there this leg would be here and this one would be kind of there but instead when you're doing a figure you want to bring this leg over towards the balancing arm and the outside leg to be further away from, um, from the, the center. So this isn't an awful example, but as you can see, the uh, front leg is just a bit too close towards the windows. So I want to rotate, bringing it closer towards the free arm, whilst also pulling the backward, back leg backwards. You can try this exercise holding a chair. The reason the extra twist is so important is because it really helps uh, lock in the shoulder and the hips, which I find uh, stops any kind of uh, unnecessary rotation that I might be trying to fight. 
Uh, so there we go. That was my figure tutorial less of a tutorial and more advice that I think might be helpful to supplement your, your figure training. Uh, before you go, please um, follow me. I'm back on Instagram. I have someone managing my account. It is The Movement Garden. Uh, the link is below in the description. Yeah, so I would love your support. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video and I uh, can't wait to see your epic figure training. Epic training. Goodbye.